this I see as a seed and a vision that goes beyond we that are here, goes beyond even our time on the land. And we want to present it to God. God has ordained us to write your destiny maker. We believe that God brought us to this earth and it is he who would cause us to walk in our destiny. This is not just a book about destiny, but God's time and our destiny. You can get it on amazon.com or on our website that's gospelfragrance.info or from the publisher that is Evangelista Media, formerly DestinyHero.com But it lies. Sun was called at the third hour, ninth hour in hour. So it has to do with religious uh, group have their philosophy concerning destiny. Now this is the philosophy of destiny making from the biblical perspective. And that is why they've titled it Spiritual Growth. It is packed with God's word, God's ways, and God's voice, I mean, how to discern God's voice, how to walk in God's ways so that you can fulfill your destiny. And it explains also what is even destiny. God's timing and your destiny. And we'll enter out God calling, Jesus calling people at specific times and uh, of their lives. Some was called at the third hour, ninth hour, eleventh hour. So it has to do with not only destiny, but knowing the time and, and jumping into this. Shallow, just recently uh, a scripture that we like quoting very much and the Bible has been of great revelation to me. The scripture says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when God gave me the theme for this month, saying, Born to be great, I asked for a scripture. And then he said, If you keep on saying that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, then you have the seed of greatness in you. So every born again believer has a seed of greatness in him. Every humanity has a seed of greatness in them. I was reading Joel chapter 2 yesterday. I read through all the translations. And the scripture says that and in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. It didn't say believers, watch it. He said all flesh, all flesh. And the proof is in Acts chapter 2 where nations had gathered on the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost at that time baptized people. And, uh, uh, and, and they had the disciples speaking their own languages. But from there, that day, 3,000 people were born again. And I believe 3,000 people were baptized. It is the same thing that happened to Cornelius. Uh, uh, he's called um, uh, a fearer of God. He was not a believer, a fearer of God. Fearers of God had, did not want to commit themselves so much uh, into some of the uh, Judaistic rituals like circumcision. And so they believed in God, but they, they refrained from certain practices. And so they are like these days, people who believe in God, but might not be going to church or might not be, uh, be known as believers. The Holy Ghost came on them without the permission of the apostles in Jerusalem. And then they demanded that Peter explains why Cornelius should speak in tongues. And I'm surprised that in 2014, that is the same thing we are doing. When the Holy Ghost, without anybody's permission, begins to baptize people, we don't think fit. We demand for answers. And I'm here to tell you as a prophetess of the Most High God, I'm here to do his bidding. And what he says is what we do. The Holy Ghost does not sit in council with any man. He chooses and knows God's times and seasons and he accomplishes it without your permission or my permission. What you can do is to hinder him like Ananias nearly did. But if Ananias had not gone to Paul's house, God surely would have found a worthier vessel to go into Paul's house. Many times where God decides to 
pick out somebody that is where we think that we can counsel God into who and who this person is. And I'm here to tell you that he is called the destiny maker. And if you are here and you think that man does not find your faith, then I've come as a prophetess of the most high God to tell you that destiny is on your path. And the destiny maker is about to do an overturning in your life. Come on, I feel such an anointing on me on the second segment. God is about to turn about some destiny. God is about to turn about some destiny. You ask me why is it that it is God that has to put me into my destiny? Can I go to school to become a doctor? Can I go to school to become a lawyer? You can go to school to fulfill your dreams, but when we come up to when we're talking about your God-given destiny, it always has to do with a warfare. It began with the Garden of Eden because in fulfilling your destiny, you fulfill the plans of God. God, I wrote in Destiny Maker that when you distort your destiny, that because humanity is like a circle, and if you don't sit in your seat, it means that you are sitting on somebody's seat, and you've caused somebody to sit on somebody's seat, and so all creation will be begins to go way wide, and this is what is happening, and this is what the devil likes. But when we begin to allow God to fix us, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, there is peace and harmony, and the Lord is king in our midst, and he rules in our midst. God is about to put somebody in his destiny. God is about to overturn somebody. God is about to put somebody on the throne. God is about to change somebody's destiny. God is about to cause somebody who was said not to be fit to be fit into their position in the name of Jesus. When you read Romans chapter 9, he says that it is he that does what causes you to fit into places where you even did not fit. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you have no certificate, whether you don't speak English, when God is about to change destinies, he does it with nobody's permission. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. We said, I said, warfare surrounds destinies. We read the Bible. This year, the Lord told me that the prophecy for the year is enlarging my territory and I've seen it in these last days. When God dares to enlarge somebody's territory, all hell breaks loose. Look at the scriptures in, in, the, in, in, the, in, in, in the New Testament. Look at the Gospels. Anytime Jesus dared to heal somebody, wahala. How dare you heal somebody? And we are finding it in 2014. If Jesus dares to place somebody in a place where men say the person does not fit. Ha, wahala. How dare you do that? But the destiny maker has come back and he's on the making of destinies. He is on the making of making people great. Lift up your head. Don't have the Mephibosheth spirit. If God has given you the king's seat, the place for king's son, Sit on it. Look up and shift up your shoulder. If you don't deserve it, God would not have put you there. Instantly, you might feel that you don't have the qualities. But if God has not put them in you, he wouldn't place you there. That is why when we read in the book of 1 John, he says that, And the seed, the holy God seed, a holy seed is planted in everybody that is born again. It's a good opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. You say, but even people who are not born again are becoming great. We are talking about greatness in the sight of God and greatness in the kingdom of God. You can be a president. If the devil makes you a president and you don't fulfill God's destiny, he has won. So it is not about becoming a president or becoming a, a millionaire, but in becoming who God says you should be. And God says if you have to be great, then it has to be what? Through service. He says, not like those of the world who do what? Who lord it and subjugate, tyrannize their people. If you are a Christian leader and you are listening to me and you have been given under the power of witchcraft, tyrannizing your people because that is the spirit of witchcraft, manipulating them. If you are a father and in the house, all you can do is shout, I am the father, I am the leader. If you are a leader and all you can do is shout your greatness around, then I'm in to tell you that you are on the wrong path. God says that to prove your leadership, show it by what? Show it by your service. And there's another scripture in Philippians I like so much. He says that Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, he says that, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. 
Ah, uh, I want to read from one to three. He said, I uh, want even to four because it is good for us. He says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded having one love, being of one accord, of one mind. Three, that is what I'm looking for. He says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. So everything you are doing, it is because of you. No, it is because God says. And if it is God says, then it is not of selfish ambition. If it's of selfish ambition, that is why you come in to manipulate people, tyrannize people, stop people, hinder people, whether by power or a physical power of witchcraft's power, by hindering people. <coughs> Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each one esteem the other better than himself. <laughs> Did you see it? God is saying that if that place is given to you, shift aside. And if you are led that God is saying, give it to your junior. Somebody you think is your junior, give it to them. I don't think that is what we see. Immediately, we enter the congregation is the elders. Of course, the seed belongs to the elders. But God is saying that let the elder shift aside and give space to the weak. And this reminds me of, I think it is, um, I think it is Mark chapter 10, where the little children wanted to touch Jesus and the disciples say, hey, 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 small, small boys, go away. Do you think we are talking about children's business? Jesus is God. And so he immediately descended. that this thing is Adamic and of the devil. The Godhead does not treat children like that. Everyone is equal. So in Joel chapter 2, he says, I will pour out my spirit on all humanity. Anybody that will call on the name of the Lord and say, I believe in Jesus, you will be saved and you will receive the gift the baptism of the spirit he says young old boy girl today in church women cannot ordain uh, i read an article which said uh, when you are ordaining a female minister it is called commissioning when you are ordaining a male it is called ordination and i just burst out laughing and i said my way to concern god of all these things whether na commissioning, whether na ordination, na God don't call, na God don't ordain. It is God that has called. You can give any name to it. It is God that has decided to use. And so I was reading Paul in Romans chapter 9 and he says that, and not only this, I'm starting from Romans chapter 9 verse 8. He says that, that is, those who are, uh, no, if I don't go uh, maybe behind, we will not really understand that. He says that, but it is not the word of God that has not taken effect. For not all Israel are Israel. Then when you go to 9, he says, for the word of promise, which was given to Rebecca, uh, Sarah, said you shall have a son. Not that alone. But God promised Rebecca and said, you will have a son. Two children are in your womb. He says that it is for the purpose of God's election that it might stand, not of works. How not we understand that when chooses somebody, God chooses somebody to do something, it is not of works. It is not because you are in long years in service. So you should be the one that is going to do that thing. If you begin to do that, witchcraft begins to enter. And that is what we will see in Acts chapter 9. So God's principles to greatness is what? Esteeming others than you. Giving space to children. Let the children in the church begin to prophesy. Give space to the youth to be active in your church. Especially with we Africans because we were under the gerontocracy rule. Many times it is always the elder and the children and the youth are shifted behind. But God says, let the little children come unto me. And if you want to be great in the kingdom, then be like the children. I think you have to study how children are. 
He's not saying that be foolish like a child, but be lowly minded like a child. And so God says that it is not the strongest that is great in the kingdom. It is not by strength that you become great in the kingdom. So we see tall, big pastors, and that is where we are going to give them the best seats. That is why when I look at Solomon, I say, I, I pray that the church...